with all the fallout from this arrest, we want to dig further into the controversy. We scheduled Mayor Peduto for our inaugural newscast a few weeks ago, and so he is here with us tonight, live over Zoom, to talk about what happened and what's next. Mayor Peduto, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you, Megan. My first question is, what thoughts crossed your mind when you first watched the online video? And how quickly did you have to mobilize people to find out what happened? Video was sent to me within minutes of the arrest, um, or actually the pictures and then the video. Uh, and I was in immediate contact with the chief of staff, public safety director and the chief of police. Uh, going through the video, I wanted the background of what was happening in the incident and why it was necessary to use these types of tactics. Uh, on Sunday, I spent the day down at police headquarters. I had the opportunity to watch over one hour of video around this event. Um, not simply the five seconds of the arrest, but all the issues that build up to it. And basically what I was told that there were tactical reasons why this would provide the least negative impact. Hey, even if that is true, it didn't answer the question of common sense and the need of using undercover officers in unmarked vehicles doing a pop-out type of operation for two misdemeanors um, and one summary offense. The individual was blocking traffic throughout the entire day. It wasn't one one stop, he was leading a team of cyclists who were setting up and closing down critical intersections. By the time he got to Oakland, he was notified, I believe it was seven times, that what he was doing was illegal, that you don't have a constitutional right to block traffic, that you do have a constitutional right to assemble, but that he cannot then also be way past, three blocks away from where the event is, blocking down intersections. The police were doing that. When um, confronted, he uh, would not communicate with the police. When the police finally went to the cyclists uh, to tell them that they were creating a public safety hazard and blocking access to hospitals, they began to move away and he ordered them back and to hold their line. Uh, the police waited till he was far away down to Forbes where they had been waiting and when he told them they had to back up, they said no, and they, he, they directed him to the car, they pulled him in, and they used an access route that had already been set up. Mayor Peduto, so, you tweeted that you have in the past, you have tweeted quickly and offered your opinions on matters after you received information, you know, within a couple hours, and you said it didn't go well always. Can you explain what you mean by that and how that influenced your tweets this weekend and also how this all plays into transparency through this entire ordeal? Yeah, we have worked very hard to be transparent throughout all of these uh, events. Uh, we have uh, very few arrests compared to other cities and we have been able to maintain very little violence uh, while at the same time providing second or first amendment right to anybody who wishes to protest, uh, even those who do not seek a permit. Uh, that being said, the, back in uh, June 1st, when the incident happened in East Liberty, uh, we pulled together all the information that we could within a few hours to be able to provide people with what had happened. And what we provided back was not all the information. There was part of the information that uh, was really around the use of gas that uh, was not presented uh, to me or to the command at that moment. Mm -hmm. So instead of having a press conference Saturday night, I spent Sunday meeting with every person involved from the police officers who were talking directly to him to the command making the decisions, watching, like I said, over an hour of video and then looking back and not being able to justify to the public this type of a tactic for a misdemeanor charge. Do you think that this will spark policy change at the Pittsburgh Bureau of Police? It already has. I put out the order uh, this afternoon that this tactic will not be used for peaceful protest. Look, this is an important tactic. When officers are trying to 
track down and define where sex trafficking is happening with children, they're not going to be in a uniform. They're going to be undercover. They're going to do roll-ups, and they're going to pull the person immediately either to safety or to arrest somebody. But the question is, do you use it for misdemeanors the same way that you would use it for felonies? I put an end to that today. The ACLU called what happened an abduction and said, quote, we need answers. And they seemed upset that you had mentioned them in one of your tweets this past weekend. Are there any answers yet? And have you had conversations today or late yesterday with the ACLU? My chief of staff was in touch with Vic Walzak, who runs the Southwestern Pennsylvania ACLU yesterday. Vic was an instrumental, instrumental part of writing our policies, which close certain parts of our streets and to inform people that they will be arrested if they do that. The state ACLU had nothing to do with it, and I don't believe that they should have commented. They should have gone to the Southwestern Pennsylvania ACLU for comment and they would have learned that they were invited to the table to help us to write laws that protect the First Amendment rights of individuals, but also enforce the laws when you close down streets and create public safety hazards. The activists that came to the city county building today that talked to media said that they plan to vote you out. How do you plan to show them that you're listening? And how do you plan to get yourself reelected in light of everything that happened? Our officers have reached out to them to have meetings, to sit down and to try to find common ground they have refused to meet. Our task force for police reform has invited them to the table to add their voice to the other voices and the youth representatives that are already on that task force. They have refused to come to the table. If their activity is for social change simply by getting into the street and protesting and not trying to work constructively, that is not a behavior that I will condone because that would be the tactic that everyone would use in order to try to bring change. Change happens when people work together. It has always been that way. It will always be that way. Mayor Peduto, we appreciate you and appreciate you taking the time. Thanks for joining me tonight. Thank you.